Hi guys, it's Dom here from Soundsphere Magazine and give me a whole year, just had a wonderful chat to the guys behind Free the Narrative, uh, which you've seen on Fight TV. I'll go into it more in the chat, uh, but I got to speak to Tommy and Jedediah who are key uh, figures in the narrative alongside EC3. We've also seen Matt Cardona and Adam Scher, who was formerly Braun Strowman in there as well. Uh, so check out this insight into uh, the makings of the narrative, uh, what made it in terms of the soundtrack, in terms of the concept, and loads more music stuff. It's just awesome. So I'm really, really happy with this one, and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. So guys, um, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. We're going to talk about Free the Narrative. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm sat with Jedediah and Tommy. Um, obviously, for those people in the UK that haven't seen the narrative yet and don't know of your involvement, uh, can you introduce yourselves and tell me what part of the narrative you play? You want to go first, sure. Tom? Yeah, why not? Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, Tom, Tommy Tanks, Tommy Tanks Schaffner, depending on what room I'm in and what I'm in charge of. Uh, when it comes to the narrative, I do um, a lot of original scoring. Uh, and, you know, that's interesting to explain. Sometimes it's just the vibe in the room or, you know, like when you watch a movie and the orchestra is telling you how you feel. I do a bit of that or um, a lot of, uh, you know, you need a song, you need a metal song, you need a, you know, something with a hip hop vibe. I. If you hear, if you hear it, I probably touched it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice one, man. That nice one. I, I think that you know it would be nice before we open the questions up to both of you guys um, together. I think individually, it would be nice to ask you, what does the narrative mean to you? How how were you hooked in? Like like because obviously you come from different musical backgrounds, but this is a this is a project. This is like a movie. <laughs> this is something else, right? So it's, what, it's what our life's you? work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, to introduce myself, I'm uh, JC Jedediah, the narrator. Um, so I am the co-creator of this uh, reality with EC3. Um, so uh, EC3 and I have, uh, he was my champion back in Cleveland and when I was running Cleveland Wrestling uh, and to which where I was with in many bands here with Tom. Uh, so when uh, EC3 was released last year and I kept on telling him he needed to control his narrative and not do all these podcasts. And that's what it was. I was like, let's do our own. And I kept on saying it, I kept on saying it. And he was already becoming the essential character and having that Tyler Durden feel um, where it's just kind of like all of us, like we just started, just started making videos and vignettes and vignettes. And Tom was coming in and just a lot of time it was just like, Hey, we need to like, cause we were all amateur learning how to do it. Hey, let's, let's work on our score here. Let's work on better mics. Let's look at work on better approaches. Uh, and that you know, two uh, 90 days before EC3 was uh, finally released and controlled his own narrative, was like a lot of us learning how to do it. And out of nowhere, we were like, "Wow, we're 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 producing short films," mm. and mm. and it took us a minute to kind of you know understand how it works in our world and how it's going to work in the wrestling uh, industry, which is really a tough place to break in with something new and original because everybody say they want that, but they really just want to regurgitate the same shit. Um, so that's where we, we came in and it was like, like we're learning and growing with the, at the world that we're changing at the same time. Mm, mm, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, obviously we'll talk a little bit more about the concepts as well, but, uh, each of you individually, um, as well, if you can musical backgrounds, cause we've talked a little bit <laughs> off camera about where you come from and what you've done. How, how did that prepare you for this? How, how have those skills you learned? previously in your music tom and i have combined like 38 to 50 bands right, okay. combined. and, and we played <laughs> yeah. in a lot of the same ones together so it's pretty dumb <laughs> um i uh so i went to sound engineering school right out of high school uh, and mostly because i was in love with trent Reznor and i wanted to be able to record myself <laughs> it's like, well if this guy this guy does it like this i want to learn how to do it like this and as interested as I was in playing guitar and playing metal, I always uh, was in love with the uh, electronic aspect of everything too. I wanted to be able to work with hip hop artists and uh, introduce that into the music I made. I never wanted to get to a point of where I want something and I don't know how to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should have uh, <laughs> sought help, <laughs> but I didn't. And here we are. 
yeah yeah i mean so, so i guess in terms of you know those those experiences and, and the pressures involved with being a musician a touring musician and also producing soundtracks whatever did, did you know those transferable skills were there any pressures that you felt doing the narrative because again it's a it's a production it was a mm. it was a beautiful thing to behold guys you know what i mean <laughs> thank you uh, oh, thank you so much <laughs> an, an, an art project that kind of shakes all the molds off and i guess did you feel any pressure and how did <laughs> and also how, how did your experiences again touring because that's a pressure in its own how did that prepare you for this um well when it came to scoring mm. and it's funny because i just listened to uh uh danny elfman on a on mark maron's podcast uh, i adore both of them yeah and yes. uh, i've listened to it three or four times now uh as it went for me danny was talking about tim burton approached him to do the score for Wee's big adventure and he was like, uh, I'm flattered and thanks, Tim, but I don't know how to do that. And Tim was like, sure you do. Yeah, it'll be fine. And Danny Elfman was like, all right. And went home and wrote a bunch of demos for Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And those demos are in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how I felt too. It was like, <laughs> I think I, I can, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and they're bringing up, you know, when we first started doing this, they're giving me examples of what they're looking for and they're playing me Hans Zimmer and stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, the greatest score composer <laughs> ever in the history of ever. You want me to do that? Okay. Yeah. It was, it was that a lot of West, we were throwing a lot of Westworld at them too. Yeah, like, that was hey, cool. Yeah, <laughs> wow, guys, this is really good. I mean, <laughs> it's really good, <laughs> but I'll do my best. And uh, the Westworld stuff was where I got the inspiration to the first, the EC3 thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jebediah, you know, you're, you're, uh, did you ever feel any pressure working directly with EC3 as you do as well? Um, you know, again, to kind of, was it, was it a clear cut thing where you were able to just work together? It was organic or were there any kind of instructions that you had to follow? Well, uh, a lot of uh, like uh, EC3 and I have been creative partners for forever. So mm. there, there's a, a brotherhood in a way yeah. you can communicate and hold each other accountable and bring out the best of each other. Uh, without you know destroying someone's uh, you know uh, self-esteem mm. and he we're really good at like because we are leaders now we have a, a staff and a team where discuss how we even lead each other uh, so he did put a lot of, uh, of pressure but it's a lot of that like we're searching for goosebumps and you know what I mean and mm. I it took within the last two years to realize that you know I was an extension of EC3 in everything I was doing creatively I was an extension of Braun Strowman whether he was with WB or not he was here with us mm -hmm. and helping create a lot of stuff and there was a lot of responsibility that we knew that 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 uh we were working with with lightning in a bottle with everybody and that's the pressure it's like oh my gosh someone's actually going to watch this mm -hmm. someone you don't know who and and it's going to be into the thousands and to make sure that like are you happy with your art when you walk away with it away from it you know, and that's what a lot, a lot of Tom and I, you know, we, we, we all put unnecessary deadlines on ourselves and we do that to, you know, make ourselves better. But uh, the last few weeks before the last, before it was released, uh, I don't think Tom and I had like a, we didn't sleep or anything. And it was a lot of us at three in the morning, like crawling around with full of bourbon, trying to make sure the mixes are okay. And, you know, and cause I'm, I'm editing and sending it. And then EC3 and I are doing the narration. We're all doing it at once. We like, you know, we're still working on that schedule of, how to once we I think can organize a schedule we can get these out every six to eight weeks no problem mm. but we're still figuring out what that is mm, absolutely it's the creative curse when you're up at 3 a.m yeah. and you're, yeah. uh, you're plugging away man absolutely yeah. it doesn't change does it um i mean that you know it moves on nicely to my next question in terms of the challenges um of pulling this together for each of you um you know because again no lack of sleep is one, for example, mm -hmm. but also pressure that people are going to watch it. You're obviously going to have, you've got names like Cardoni, you've got names like Adam Sher, Braun Strowman. You, you, like you said, you know people are going to be watching this and to, to, to do something that not only meets but exceeds expectations, which I think mm -hmm. is what, you know, from a global scale, what I can see yeah. you've done, people, you know, yes. people giving you very positive feedback. But what were the biggest challenges for you guys that took you out of your comfort zones? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I don't, well yeah yeah well we we i mean we'd still stayed in our like this is still our style like the songs that were written for the first and second one mm -hmm. it's still our comfort zones i think taking it out of the comfort zone uh is did i light it the right way you know um you know did i have the right cameraman in the right spot to cap mm -hmm. capture everything because we are doing this live 
you know, mm-hmm. we're not yelling cut. And I mean, I do cut it a couple times, but when you got these performers in the moment and they're bleeding their emotions everywhere, you don't want to stop that. You don't want, you want them, you want to capture every bit of it and see what's there in, in post. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think uh, that was like, giving up a little bit of control on the, on the director end was, was my thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I'm, that's used, I'm pretty used to uh, working in a room by myself. That's actually what I prefer. Mm-hmm. Um, and even like when writing for other bands where other, other humans are actually involved, I tend to want to start in this dark room and, you know, sit in the dark and do whatever that's, it is I do and then present it. Um, so, and that's what I do for this, but it's a little complicated when I think about I'm when I'm writing I'm usually writing from my perspective Mm -hmm. and thinking about writing a song for these guys that is technically to define their entire being uh that's fucking heavy dude (laughs) (laughs) and uh, so when I worked for, I uh, did Adam's theme, I just thought of the way I thought about it, you know, everyone gives their notes in and I, and I need that because well, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do otherwise. But I thought about if I were that dude and I were that size, well, how would I want it to sound every time I walked into a room full of people? Mm, mm. And I just kind of pulled that out and took some direction from his notes and hope he likes it. And it turns out he loved it. Uh, but that's a scary moment because mm. I'm kind of, you know, pouring my heart out for this whole other entity that I've, I've never even met Adam. Yeah. Uh, and I have to tell his entire life story in three minutes. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I did it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, and like it was, it was when we were writing Adam, the, the new, t- t- we we're writing rise, the, the theme <laughs> of the Titan, um, we were going through a lot of like, you know, we wanted to naturally be thrashy. We wanted to natu- naturally, you know, go on that vibe. And uh, Tom's produced a lot of stuff that we thought were in the vein of him um, that hopefully will end up on another album he's producing here. Uh, but it really took him going, uh, Adam just straight up, and this is clickbait as, as shit here, is him going like, just give me something that's in the, in the same world of Bray's theme. He wanted The Fiend. And that's all he needed to say with to Tom and I. Right. We knew like Tom had it back in 24 hours. Per, like, exa- hey, this is my rough. But it was like, OK, cool. Can we go in that room? Can we go Wyatt family with this? Can we do all that kind of stuff uh, and, and go heavier? And uh, one of our associate producers, he runs No Peace Underground in the sound bar. When I sent it to him, he goes, I never Jared goes, I never thought uh, you can write a heavier song for a guy who already had a heavy theme song. <laughs> Braun's, Braun's theme song was heavy as shit. I always wanted to do spin kicks when I hear that song. And, and Tom, Tom achieved that. Like it's, it's, you know, you could just see that him just towering over everybody as he walks to the ring on that song. Yeah. Man. And uh, I was glad he mentioned uh, the Fiend theme because I'm a, a big Code Orange fan. Yeah. Uh, those kids well, are doing Code, everything yeah. I ever wanted to do when I was 25 and they're 25 and doing it. They're our big uh, inspiration. Them, them d- releasing underneath right as a pandemic. Uh, such a motivator for Tom and I. Oh beautiful, yeah. Beautiful you know. record. Beautiful record. Back it it came out and it was like, yeah, that's what I, that's what I meant. <laughs> 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 yeah. that. Uh, I wish I'd had some Roadrunner money when I was 25. I might've did something like that. I tried, but they, they motivated us as like, they were controlling their narrative left and right. They would not Absolutely. let the pandemic a record label anybody get in the way of their own of, of getting their art out there and that's why they're touring with slipknot kill switch right now like mm-hmm. they earn they're they're they, they're such a motivator and it's really nice that like we played in bands that influenced their generation mm-hmm. and now they're coming back and influencing us to keep on going and that's that's what i i get that's what i love about them absolutely yeah, right. absolutely yeah, absolutely awesome stuff i mean <clears throat> just want to check Call me. Yeah. Call me. <laughs> yeah, just want to, you know, I uh, just want to check on a couple of things there, Tommy, because I, there's a couple of things you said there about, you know, the suit, and I, I nearly interrupted you with excitement because when you were talking about being on your own in a dark room, I was like, that's Trent Reznor. You, there, there you go. There's, <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's the Reznor in you. And the second thing is, man, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, I want Roadrunner money when I'm 25. There's people wishing that they were doing control and free the narrative. You know, you, you've already oh, done I'm not, that. I'm not, com- believe me, I'm not complaining. 
Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you've you've done, done, done some amazing stuff, man. I was I was lucky enough to speak to Code Orange when they were coming up, and uh, just one of my favourite bands. So it's, it's lovely to have that inspiration there. I, I try not to do the clickbait thing because we focus more on music than we do wrestling traditionally. Uh, but is there anybody you want to knock on the door and anybody you'd like to soundtrack in a dream scenario, not, yes. le- not leading people in any particular way, of course? <laughs> everybody call me everybody uh you know i would love to try and be in a room with a resner and see if i don't get laughed out of it uh might (laughs) but it would be the learning experience would be fantastic um and i've you know touched on his material quite a bit in the last 30 Mm. years um we actually have a piece where he I have to sit on right now um, that I hope people hear someday soon because it came out great. Uh, I've spent an evening with Devin Townsend and it was like going to church. It was absolutely amazing. I wish I could work with him again. He's busy, dude. Uh, hard to get a hold of. Um, yeah, I really, I really, Tom Petty, mm. uh, rest in peace. I would love, I don't even need to work with him. I just want to sit in the room and watch him do what he does. <laughs> uh, those are like my three major dudes that I just uh, strive to be like. Mm, mm, absolutely. Uh, Jedediah, anybody you want to see knock on the door of the narrative to come in wrestling or otherwise? Uh, it's, it's rough for me because I'm, I'm in the center of, of the, yeah. cre- the, the creative process. You're asking the therapist who's been sitting on the couch. Yeah. There's been, there's been a few that's been sitting on the couch that'll really blow some, 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 uh, some superstars have come in the room wanting their narrative controlled. Um, but we're try we, at this point, we don't have to rush anything. It's, it's, it's literally like with, the uh, with free the narrative to, uh, going out for free, uh, we're kind of really discussing our brand being more free, free live events, free narratives. Um, hopefully we can get somebody to help sponsor some of our message. Uh, I think we have a message that can really change. I'm not really interested in changing the wrestling world because they don't want to get changed. I'm looking to help the people that need help that are mm. going to those shows. Mm. And I think that the narrative Uh, And what Adam and and EC3 have given in their performances, there's going to be a lot more uh, people that come in there that need to to destroy who they are inside. Um, And so if that's being said, um, Wyndham, we're waiting for you to knock. Uh, (laughs) But no, it it would be great to to work with with Wyndham. Um, He is just like Code Orange where he's influenced us to create this cinematic uh, reality. Uh, I'd love to do that. Um, I've I've joked about uh, help working with Ric Flair. Um, just because I'd like to um, beat them down into not being uh, Ric Flair anymore. I want to mm. see what what kind of uh, man at that age still has to walk around pretending to be that person. Like what kind of mm. what kind of misery is Ric Flair hiding? And I, and, and I never it, I don't care about your 17 titles or any of that stuff. I want to see what's really inside there. And I think that that's where a lot of the dark side of the ring was trying to expose that, you know, it's not canceling somebody. It's hey, man, grow, grow up. And I'd love to give him that opportunity. Uh, as far as any, like, it's hard to say who I want knocking on that door because we don't really exist as a wrestling company anymore. Mm. We, we mm. can really work with whoever we want because mm. uh, we're independent film company. So it's really just like, uh, I'm, I'm more interested to see who comes to us at this point. Cause everybody I've tried to solicit, they waste my time. Um, yeah. we're, you know, I want the ones that want to be there. Um, Absolutely. to be honest. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just picking up on something you said there, I, I think you've said it in a couple of interviews you've done as well. Uh, the narrative seems like therapy for some people. And you look at Cardona yeah. and where Cardona is now and where Adam is oh, yeah. they seem to really come into their own. What to what extent do you see the narrative? Because again, because again, it seems like Adam had Tommy was talking about notes from Adam. Adam had a lot of control about what about what he wanted. Uh, and Matt Cardona as well. To what extent is this therapy for someone to look at and go, they are literally shedding their old skin, Mm -hmm. their sports entertainment skin. Mm -hmm. And you're not trying to be a wrestling company. You're trying, you are trying to um, visually uh, provide visual therapy for someone. It's it's, yeah. It's it's a platform for mental health. And we're starting to realize that it was Adam that really pointed it out to us. Like we were trying so hard with the Cardona one. I was trying so hard to make sure that the room was lit cool. The lighting was going to make you question things and the, the dirt on the ground. I was so focus on an artist where the, the one with Adam, I stripped that all away. Uh, we filmed it in a venue very similar to what Tom and I used to play up in Cleveland. It felt like an old Peabody's. I felt like I was back in my roots and that scared the shit out of me. So that is the challenge I had to go through is I had to create something new by going into something from my past. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
would Adam Adam walked right in that room that day and busted tears and and made everybody feel comfortable for the day of when we when we filmed and i think it's that that wow look at this guy who's on top of the world who's the strongest man alive like if you look at him he's he's you know he's blue trunk hulk hogan he's, he hasn't found the yellow trunks yet we're gonna get him to the yellow trunks but he's still blue trunks he's he's big he's cool uh, he's still trying to find out who he is and he made everybody in that room from the indie wrestlers that showed up to be projects to the guys that were competing in WWE with them to all the ring of honor guys that were there to to, to help out and and adam made everybody feel like he He's so David Lee Roth. He's like David Lee Roth with tears. You know what yeah. I mean? That's really what it is. Like he shows up and, and he gave us that opportunity to really find out who we are. And EC3 to finally show who he really is. Not even as the essential character. Like he was able, like the, the therapy he got out of that because he did have to sit on the sidelines, being best friends with Adam and watch Adam get this push. And he's sitting there just taking the power bombs, mm -hmm. you know? And like, there's those, those things of watching uh, everybody, everybody w comes out of that situation, a better person. And, you know, that's why everybody keeps on knocking on the door, you know? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'm so excited for the future of it. Uh, four or five more questions now, before we talk a little bit more about music, I wanted to ask you, you know, obviously the narrative is about change. It's about becoming who you want to be. And I don't think that should be skipped over for you guys either. You know, you guys have come from a musical background. You guys have come from a, from a, from a certain background. Do you feel like you have changed and developed? So rather, rather, it's probably a leading question. How do you feel like you've changed and developed through this project? And well, you'll, uh, see a, you'll see a new Japan coming up. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we got a chance to produce the Buddy Matthew stuff for New Japan. And I think Amazing. that's a lot, of, a lot of Tom and I are going to be able to hopefully, and I mean, I'm just speaking for Tom and I, but I want video games. I want... I want corporate gigs. I want to bring, uh, like we talk about, we have a certain audacity to our, our art form. And we take that approach of, you know what, this is how we're going to fucking do it. And that's how we've always been. And that's how I think we're going to like continue to be the team that brings, uh, the, the most and the biggest middle finger artistically to everything else. Like we're not, it's, yeah. it's finally working. <laughs> <laughs> we finally are 40 years. have been like, you know what, I'm going to do it my way and fuck you. Yeah. And and finally, people are showing up and going, hey, will you will you do this your way? Yeah. Man. And Tom, can, can you explain yeah. the other project? We haven't gone into like everything Tom's doing, like the bands you play in, the bands you're producing, ghostwriting for like hit, hit the what am I that. doing? What am I doing right now? Um, <laughs> uh, I uh, we, we don't have anything till March, but I still the uh, live guitar player for Mushroom Head. Um, I. And just like the other stuff I work on, when it's time to write, I uh, present them with stuff. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, sometimes it gets changed, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I do that for Static X as well. Nice. Um, and I am uh, honored for them to even ask because, yeah. you know, a couple platinum selling <laughs> albums. They're like, hey, man, we got this thing. We threw some keyboards on it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really Not cool. To to work with he, burned that CD out, he burned that CD out in high school. Like so. <laughs> I did. I, uh, Wisconsin Death Trip. I oh, never yeah. left my CD player. Yeah, man. Classic. It's probably still in there in my 89 Chevy Astro van. <laughs> um, but it's, and it's kind of like when I do stuff with a narrative working with them, I, it basically email based. Uh, they'll send me stuff. I do my thing to it and I send it back. Um, I, know, I know I did something good because I don't hear from them. Uh, sometimes I get the emails are like, hey, can you change this, fix this, give this another shot? Yeah. Um, and it took me a minute to realize that the silence is good because they're doing something with it. So shut <laughs> up and wait. Uh, so I also do that uh, for Dope. Oh, wow. Um, awesome, man. Yeah. yeah, I should have a bunch of stuff on. I hate to talk about things before they come out because um, you never know. Yeah. Uh, but I wrote a bunch of stuff for the new Dope album. Kind of uh, similar. I'd send him tunes, he'd adapt it and send it back. Or again, hey man, we add all of your candy to this tune. Uh, and then the uh, the narrative is what really keeps me up nights. It's, so, <laughs> it's always so different, and and I appreciate that. And just sometimes I have to wrap my head around what I'm doing. <laughs> the the, uh, the the narrative is like your. Or slip or ghosts and and the rest of it's like your uh 
downward spiral are you uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah excellent yeah. reference yeah <laughs> there, you, there you go man that's good um i guess that was going to be my next question was both of you uh you've talked about your musical past mushroom head etc and your association with that band but give me your top five this is this is me doing music music style of you top five uh influences for both of you and why oh shit uh do you want to go first oh gosh uh because like my with me it's like like uh, as a vocalist, I have a different influence than like what they bring to me to the table. So it kind of blurs the sames. Um, but uh, Tom and I, I mean, I'm not gonna speak for Tom, but I know definitely Fear Factory, uh, oh, yeah. Faith and More, like I, the Faith and More Mr. Bungle thing, I definitely put together. Uh, to be honest, Integrity uh, is a band I got to play with once or twice. Uh, the art and uh, the approach to some of that early stuff and, and how Do It has reimagined it and, and broken genres thereof. Uh, those um gosh pendulum is gigantic yeah. i think pendulum is probably probably my all-time biggest influence right now yeah uh and then i do a lot of gunship and i'm sent i always kind of i kind of give tom like hey if you can't if you because nine, nine inch nails obviously is is our end all be all but if you can't trent this out i go i send him gunship and i'm like hey let's take this approach you know what i mean uh so those those are i guess were my five nice one cool man thank you tommy uh I think I mentioned most of them already, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Nine Inch Nails, um, Danny Elfman, uh, ironically, Mushroom Head. Yeah, definitely. Uh, seeing them come up as a kid changed my life Same. in every way. In every way, we still can't break up with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a high school we, girl for, we just we just keep <laughs> on going back to like right um and that was you know then that was a a really cool lesson in the business and uh i was on their crew from before i graduated high school t- for six seven years mm. um so that had that has deep roots and then uh you know four four years ago now they they asked me to join and um man what my fuck that is, but it's cool. Uh, awesome. I guess I owe you one more. Judd said Fear Factory. Absolutely. I'm missing someone major. Ministry. Oh my god, Elder. Ministry, Jordan. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I man. love me. I love me some ministry. You uh when, when if you listen to Cardona's Ghostbuster theme, that was Tom literally going, I'm gonna fear factory the fuck out of this. I turned yes. the, I turned the Ghostbuster theme into a fear factory song. And that's <laughs> That's one of my my highest achievements. Like I, I don't know how I'm gonna tough this up, but it, the riff just landed it to it in two seconds. I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. Nice one, man. Nice one. It's actually uh, bucket uh, ministry is my bucket list. I've actually worked with worked with Pendulum before. And I, I, I've yeah. worked with some of those other bands. Fear Factory is another one, and uh, Ministry and Al, uh, yeah. one of my bucket list ones. So fingers crossed for that. Uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd me too. To- I would love to. I'd love to rap with Al for a, get a half hour with that guy. Love to, love, to ch- love to chat to him, man. But yeah, uh, before we do the, the press bit, the plug-in bit where you can talk about all the projects and, and yeah. this wonderful screen printing room that you're in there right now. <laughs> uh, I, one of the parts of my day job is I work with young people from uh, maybe disadvantaged backgrounds, maybe they've got some difference, uh, maybe they're struggling uh, with mental health uh, and confidence particularly is one, but they're all usually interested in music, creative creativity. They've maybe got access to a studio, uh, you know, it's like a, it, I work as part of a youth center, basically. Um, they, you know, it's about creating musical projects, producing music, things like that, teaching people that wouldn't otherwise have the access uh, to these projects, uh, to these opportunities uh, and how to use, you know, software, how to play drums, etc., things like that. Mm-hmm. Now, what they come to me with quite a lot is I want to be, like this guy. I want to be like a Tommy Schaefer from Mushroom Head. I want to be like a Jedediah Christopher producing movies, producing, you know, wrestling mm. movies and things like that. And they get bogged down with, with, with the idea of success. And, you know, usually it's competing with somebody else, you know, mm. like, Oh, I'm never going to get to this level. Now I wanted to ask you guys, um, what is your relationship with success and how has it changed? Uh, you know, what, 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 what kind of tips would you give to any young person who watches the narrative as a wrestling fan or a music fan and wants to, you know, wants to try and do something like that? You want to go first, Sam? Sure. Um, fuck success. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Make, make what you're going to make. 
don't think about what's going to get you where you think you're trying to go. Okay. Just do what you love. And if you have to adjust that a little bit later to make the money people happy, sure. Just do what you're going to do. Um, mm. Because it, you know, humans are fucking stupid, but no, they're not. Humans are very right. And it's very obvious when you're faking it. Mm. Mm. To me, anyway. Mm. We so, call that phoning it in in the business? Yeah. Just, <laughs> uh, write what you're going to write. Do what you're going to do. Do what makes you happy. And if success, you know, whatever you, however you measure that money or fame or whatever comes with it, great. But if it doesn't, just do what makes you happy. Okay, um, that's good. I, 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 I totally agree with Tom. I, uh, I have a rough time judging our own success and what is over and what is, you know, um, you know, you can look at a bank account, you can look at views, you can look at um, what's really touching me is the amount of people's life that we're changing. Mm. Uh, and that's how I'm judging my success is how I'm making a better platform and a better place for people to enjoy uh, not only wrestling, but learn about themselves through the product. Absolutely. And, uh, and taking my own advice is complicated at times because, you know, trying to balance this lifestyle and, you know, having a place to live and eating <laughs> are yeah. uh, different things. You know, uh, I am grateful for every opportunity I get, but I'm not, I'm not rich. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, Same. still, you know, still have part-time jobs that I know how much money that's going to pay. Um, I love that job too. I, uh, I'm super into craft cocktails and, and food and, uh, I am lucky enough to have friends that own an amazing bar in town that I can work at as much or as little as I want to. Awesome. Um, and I still do that two, three days a week just to make sure uh, I can buy more gear <laughs> to make more cool music. <laughs> uh, and, you know, they, there's the really good years and the tougher years, but and we're all getting on in age and trying to measure mm. trying to measure am I happy is complicated a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know, I could just go to a job and, and not worry about where the next checks come in or all of that, but I don't want to do that either. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to find consistency as an artist, but Tom and I always kind of set our goal is that we'll, we'll relax when we don't have to have a part-time job. You know what I mean? When our art can kind of, kind of take up that spot and, you know, you know, let us, you know, relax and focus on our, on building a future for our families. And that's, that's kind of where we're both at. And I'm definitely, we talk about it a lot, you know, uh, but I definitely feel that I, I, I don't, I've, when I was an indie promoter, I felt like I was wasting my time. When I was a music promoter, I felt like I was wasting my time. Like what was the end goal? Mm. Uh, when I was in local bands and trying to tour, I felt so like I was wasting my time mm. with the narrative. I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. I feel like every time I hit a goal, there's something like, like, what's next? What's next? What's next? And, and that's what, you know, put out in the universe. I'm very lucky to have a, a printing business to help keep that dream alive. Cause I can then focus on really making a difference in the world. Absolutely, man. Honestly, you're right. Like, I know I'm just one guy, but I, I think the evidence is, is in the streams for the soundtrack and it's in the views on fight and stuff. Like it's the, the game is changing. It's an interesting, yeah. exciting project that you guys have put out. And I, I know I wasn't a part of all the hours and all the sleepless nights, but I tell you what, man, the most fun I've had watching a wrestling show in a very long time, the most I've been engaged from a from an emotional standpoint, because it was it felt like there was real change happening to Adam. And I know that's part yeah. of the, that's part of the you know, that's part of the, 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 the film, the product, but you, you feel entertained. But you I mean, I didn't know he was going to go that way. I, yeah. I mean, I'm in the ring with the camera and I'm I'm producing all this with them i had no idea it was going to go to where it went and that was all authentic mm -hmm. uh and real and you can just tell he needed to get that out so bad like he needed um now yeah. let me ask let me ask you real quick now with we've talked a lot about trent Reznor. it's obvious where our influence on the theme song was in the intro uh at what point were you hooked was it the moment the song kicked in because it like you're such a music fan 
And there's so much of our product is so music based and it's yeah. meant to, to draw you in and help with those emotions and, was, and take it, you places. It was the atmosphere, man. The narration was great too. I, you know, like, like I say, I really enjoyed the narration, but like it was just the way that it complemented, you know what I mean? It didn't get in the way, but there was just so much, there was like, I'm trying to, I, I would compare it to a ghost that, and I'm not trying <laughs> to say, I'm not trying to say like it was a rip up or anything like that, but like just the, 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 the highs and the lows, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was so much, there was a lot of dynamic to it. And I think that I was listening to it thinking, like, this, is, this isn't this is like, you know, with a lot of wrestling shows, I think you said like uh, in an interview previously, you people rely on kind of new metal and that kind of old, you know, yeah. sort of metal vibe. But this was like, this was atmospheric. This was like, um, <laughs> it was Nine Inch Nails, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I, like, from the beginning, yes. But it was, I, I'm trying to think, the Quake soundtrack, right? Like Quake, yeah. that, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that wasn't like pounding industrial metal. That was atmospheric. That was yeah. boom, big drums, big guitars, big moments, and then atmosphere. And then you don't know quite when it's going to pick, you know, you don't know when it's going to hit you again, but it's like. And, it's, and that's the beauty, like, uh, like for example, Pero is death. When yeah. Pero kicks in, yeah. we, you, you know you're in for a good time. And that was, I mean, that's, that's pure, and that's, you know, Tom's like industrial dubstep song. But like it was, I, I love editing those matches because I get to jam out to that song for two yeah. days. You know what I mean? Like that song's a might be one of our best. <laughs> like you know, I, right, and if ironic about that piece is it happened in like four hours total. Mm. Like oh yeah, from mm. first riff to mix, I did mm. that in one day, mm. and I sent it off, and I was like, I don't even know what I don't know what just happened, but. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. I hope you guys better like it. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you know, like it's a, it's a good, it's good. It gets me, get me pumped. It got a lot of other people pumped. There's very few records that I can listen to that, you know, the, from the instrumental side of things, because I get sent so much music all the time, you know, but that, that was like, there was one other uh, record by a band called the Haxton Cloak or an act is not a band, but it's called the Haxton Cloak. He's done some really cool production. I think you guys uh, might dig it. Um, I think he's a, he's a British artist. Uh, it's H A X A N cloak, but it's really atmospheric, almost horror uh, themed. But like, I've seen the name. I've seen that yeah, pop and things. Yes. But like that type of vibe where I put it in my headphones and I'm typing away or I've got a job to do. And I'm like, you know what I mean? You can, it's not just, it's not just like a mosh thing where you would listen to, you know, a band and you like, like just head banging. You're like, you, you, you're motivated by it. You feel it. And you, you know, I'm not trying to pretend I felt what Adam felt in the ring or I felt like, yeah. you know, what, what Perro felt or anybody, you know, other examples there, but, but you feel it. And then that's good. That's, that's good impact for music. You might not have billions of streams, but like it's doing pretty fucking well, which is awesome. Yeah. Well <laughs> done. But also, but also it's impactful. And I think it's, it's a, I look at the narrative and I see a movie, I see a movie, but not in the same way a WWE creates a movie and we, we make movies, you know, sports yeah. entertainment. This is like movies for people that really give a fuck about art, but yeah. not in a pretentious way. Like, like these are real people working really fucking hard to pull something together to enter to entertain people. And yes, there's names associated with it, but like, honestly, like, it just feels like a fucking great art project that you guys have had a lot of fun doing and you've put your heart and souls into. And that's what I got when I was watching it, mm -hmm. you know? Well, well, wrestling is poetry to us. Yeah. That, 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 that's, yeah. that's a summary of what I should have just said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as a, as a lifelong wrestling fan, I, I feel like this is the wrestling show I would want to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. absolutely. You know, years of the, uh, WWE mold. I, I, clearly it works. Clearly it works. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. With the, was there 50 years of it working very well? Um, but as I get older, I, you know, I still love the art of wrestling, but that type of show doesn't really appeal to me anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And seeing it done this way, it's like, man, I, I know how old I am and I know what wrestling was like when I was growing up. I know yeah. there's got to be a lot more of us out there that want yeah. to see it like this. Yeah, I think it's relatable to hardcore fans, fans of ECW, the DR, yeah. you know, independent, 
independent wrestling promotions. It's relatable to that, you know, but it, but it's there's a sea change coming because if you've got names, if you've got guys like yourselves behind the scenes who've got musical pedigree, but you've got guys in front of the camera like Adam, like EC3, like Matt Cardona, you know, it's going to go from strength to strength. And, and, I'm, and I'm so excited, guys, honestly. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. Thank you. Uh, to, to talk to you, but also to, to continue on watching the narrative, supporting it. Uh, two more questions and then we'll finish up. Uh, thank you so, so much for spending uh, all the time with me. Um, the, we'll do the press and media bit and then we'll do a message for fans in the UK and, and people that, you know, that you want to check the narrative out. But yeah, the press bit and the plugging bit. What have you got to promote? Obviously, we've, we've heard about some of Tommy's musical projects uh, that you could tell us. But yeah, anything else you got to plug? Anything you want to plug? You're in the screen printing shop right there working on stuff. Uh, what have you got to uh, promote? So uh, EC3 and I uh, and Adam have a print shop called Justified Prints. Uh, we digitally print just like Pro Wrestling and Tees does, but we also screen print. Uh, we uh, handle clothing lines and a lot of fitness uh, companies. Uh, so we, we print for Adam's Meat Castle, all the EC3, all the narrative stuff you see. Um, all, Marina Shafir, um, we, we produced her for the narrative and she gets her shirts printed here too. Um, we're, we got that going on. Uh, in reality, pay attention to a lot of what Tom and I are being tagged in because, you know, like I said, we did just some work with New Japan uh, with Buddy, Mer Buddy Matthews. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Tom is there any that I mean, i'm gonna laugh when i say this is there anything going out mushroom at anytime soon maybe <laughs> uh we <laughs> maybe <laughs> uh, as far as i know you know the industry is so rocky right now we don't know what we can get away with uh but as it stands right now uh mushroom Med is slated to open for uh static x and fear factory this coming march which nice. is just a powerhouse lineup holy yeah. shit yeah. tommy takes I, I would just go to that <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get to be there uh it's really awesome. excited about that um uh as it stands now, there are uh, European dates for July of 2022. Yeah. Again, as it stands now, things, it's yeah. been weird. Yeah. Things keep changing, but yeah. um, those are slated to happen currently. Really looking forward to that. Um, that's, uh, I know both Static and Dope have new albums due 2022 as well. Um, if I know the business, I imagine Static would have an album out before that tour happens, but I don't know. Uh, I'm stoked to hear it because like I said, I turn in stuff and I don't hear it again. And then it comes out and I go, oh shit, listen to that. That's awesome. Uh, That's awesome. If you happen to find yourself in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, stop by LBM. It's a, uh, metal themed. We've been changing our concept every three months to try and get our, our, uh, our clientele too excited and coming back due to you know COVID issues and we can only seat so many people so we got to keep our fans happy uh so we completely changed the uh cocktail and food menu every three months like change it hard we're doing a Japanese theme right now and I think it might be one of our best ones yet cool. uh and if you're trying to see me um a couple of days during the week where that's where I'll be awesome. yeah if you need you need any uh metal therapy he's there for you <laughs> absolutely you want to drink fancy cocktails and listen to fear factory absolutely stop, man. stop by so, so, <laughs> sounds like a dream very occasionally i get to do jobs in america so uh so i'll i'd love to come visit man at some point that'd be really cool yeah, yeah definitely man definitely do. awesome okay uh but well yeah so a uh, final message then for people that haven't checked out the narrative uh people in the uk uh obviously you uh, we can watch it on fight when it comes on and obviously you can watch the replays right now what is your message for fans in the uk uh, and, all, and also people that haven't checked it out yet it's actually gonna be free by the time this airs we nice. it, yeah it goes free tomorrow on youtube nice. so our we're where we realize that uh, wrestling fans uh, get 20 hours of free entertainment every week that all they do is sit around and argue about which one is better at doing the exact same fucking thing. Uh, they weren't really like, you know what I mean? It was, we weren't really getting the, the uh, everybody is cheap. They're just, they're fickle. They want it. They, you know, and like we put so much into this, we released the first one about five days ago and it's at 7,000 or so views. Uh, so 7,000 more that didn't see it this year. That's the Cardona one. So we're going to put this out for free. Uh, uh, Adam's got a big uh, interview with Busted Open Radio where he's going to kind of launch it. Uh, Adam's going to continue to uh, bet on himself rather than show up at another company, from what I understand. And I hope that that message is a reason why anybody who hasn't seen it to go watch it. And if you like it, if you like, if you like three minutes of it or if you like all 90 minutes of it, send it to every friend you know that likes either 
that music, mental health, fight club, wrestling, it's all in there. Like literally David Fincher and Trent Reznor put on a red, red wrestling company. That's what happened. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Um, like that's, that's, that's what we want to be. And that's what we want to achieve. So, you know, if you like it, send it to everybody, you know, send it to your aunt, send it to your uncle, send it to your ex-girlfriend and, you know, say, Hey, EC3 is better looking than your, yes. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> be like, Hey, take a look at EC3's abs. You know what I mean? Here it is. <laughs> like, uh, I watched, I, you know, I spend like four days a week at the gym and then I have to, uh, edit these guys in slow motion. Like I need to go to the gym more. <laughs> Uh, man, I think I think you're doing just fine, man. Like I say, your soundtrack work and your production work, man. Like I say, it's fantastic, uh, brilliant, and honestly, well done, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for the exposure to the narrative as well. Just a little bit more of an understanding, and hopefully, we can uh, we can uh, work together to take it out to more people. So, uh, thank you so much for your time, Jedi. Thank you so much for your time, Tommy. Really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you, brother, and appreciate thank you for you. this, Sue. Yeah. Pleasure.